Hey everyone, John Kolb from Suffering Outdoors. Today my video is, do lively legs catch more fish? I set up the experiment and I caught 100 fish and I have the answer at the end of this video. So I spent a good amount of time trying to come up with a way that I could accurately and fairly test whether or not lively legs would help you catch more fish. So I took relatively standard common flies like a hare's ear nymph, a pheasant tail, um, a, uh, a generic mayfly nymph, um, blue winged olive nymph, BWO, and I use the exact same material, I use the exact same thread, the same techniques, and for one of the flies, I would uh, tie on the lively legs, rubber legs. And then for the other fly, I would use hackle or like pheasant tail fibers for the legs instead of the lively legs. As far as how I set up the study, I am using a drop shot rig. And my flies are about six to eight, six to eight inches apart. I spent a good amount of time trying to determine what would be the most fair and accurate way to test the two different flies. So what I decided to do was catch 10 fish with one fly on the bottom. Once I hit that 10th fish, regardless of how much action I was into, I would then switch the flies around. So for my very first fish, my very first setup, I flipped a coin, lively legs ended up winning and being on the bottom. I set my lively legs up, I fished, caught 10 fish, cut the flies off the tags, switched them around with the standard fly on the bottom, and then would fish until I caught another 10 fish, and then do the same thing. I caught 50 fish with the lively legs on the bottom, and I caught 50 fish with the lively legs on the top. Yes. The top fly, he took the non-lively legs fly. First experiment fish. I started at the beginning of April, and it is now June 25th, and I caught both my 50th fish with the lively legs on the bottom today, and my 50th fish with the lively legs on top today. And I'm really excited to share with you those results. Every time that I caught a, a fish, I would get my phone out and I would record species of fish, rainbow brown trout, brook trout. I would record if it was the top fly or the bottom fly, and of course, if it was the lively legs or the standard fly and then I recorded all that data in Excel. Another really interesting thing that I learned through this study, which makes complete sense, the bottom fly was taken 68% of the time. So one could argue that the bottom fly is your most important fly to use and likely gonna be the fly that catches the most fish. What's also really interesting, for the month of April, 77% of my fish caught were on the bottom fly. So you could argue that fishing a one nymph rig is nearly as effective, if not as effective as fishing a two nymph rig, because most of the time the fish is gonna be feeding or at the bottom, and if that bottom fly is gonna be the first fly that that fish sees, it's gonna take that fly. So going into this study, if I were to guess, do lively legs catch more fish? My answer was yes, I thought that lively legs would catch more stocked fish and I, I felt that lively legs would catch less wild fish, uh, specifically brown trout uh, that can be more selective than brook trout, especially if you're fishing a mountain stream, freestone mountain stream where there's not a lot of food sources. I felt like the lively legs would do as well, if not better, just because it has that slightly larger profile with the legs sticking off of it. And I also, for the same reason, I thought that stocked fish would take the lively legs over the traditional fly, just because it, it's almost a, an attractor with those legs on it to where it kind of, my thought was it would grab the fish's attention and, and it would want to take it just because it has that, that bigger profile. Um, maybe they'll see it first because fish are trying to, to get more calories and more intake until they start getting pressured and, and, or if there's really good food sources. So the areas that I was fishing for my wild brown trout, when I started fishing those limestone streams, I thought that the lively legs would not perform as well as the standard fly. 
So to have a significant statistical difference, we would want to see at least 55% one way or the other. Because if you flip, think about if you flip a coin, heads, tails, um, and you flip it, you might get heads. You flip it again, you might get heads. You flip it again, you could get tails. Flip it again, you get heads, um, and so forth. So, so what you see is, although it's a 50% chance, each time you flip that coin, it's independent of what, what occurred the last time. So if you flip that coin enough times, the percentages of heads versus tails should come down to 50-50. If I only do it 10 times, uh, maybe it's 60-40. If I only do it uh, three times, it might be 100% one way or the other. And that's, that's why I picked 100 trout. I thought that that was a, a pretty good sample size you would like to see at least 55% one way to make a statistical conclusion. So the, the first category would be rainbow trout. Of the rainbow trout that I caught, 58% took the lively legs, 42% took the standard fly. Brown trout, 60% took the lively legs, 40% took the standard fly. This one was surprising and a, a bit of an outlier, but I'm also gonna have an asterisk at it because it was a small sample size. I only caught 21 brook trout. Of the 21 brook trout that I caught, 62% took the standard fly to only 38% the lively legs. As far as stocked fish, 58% took the lively legs, 42% took the standard fly. Now the wild trout um, the wild trout spread was 52% lively legs, 48% standard fly. The total study period of the entire 100 fish is 54-46. So that's not a significant statistical difference to make the conclusion that lively legs do catch more fish. Now within my sample or my experiment, there may be certain categories that it is. So one thing that was really interesting, I also tracked limestone streams versus freestone streams. Of the limestone fish that I caught, 65% took the lively legs compared to 35% taking the standard fly. Of the freestone streams, it was about a 50-50 split, 48% um, lively legs, 52% standard fly. I don't have a good reason why on limestone streams that the lively legs was preferred. Both streams I, f I fished were relatively highly pressured streams. So I, again, I don't know if it was the profile of the legs, whether they look more realistic or whether it just looks like a bigger meal and the fish were preferring that, but that is a pretty big difference, 65% to 35%. Sample size isn't great either. It's probably in, in the 40s or so. so. So you could ar argue statistically that I'm, I may need to catch more fish on limestone streams to determine whether or not that is actually making a difference or if there is some anomalies or uh, just by chance that, that more were taking the lively legs. But I did notice, at least from, from an obser observation standpoint, that it appeared in the statistics show that I was catching more fish on the lively legs in those limestone streams. We'd love to hear your theories or thoughts as to why that, that could be the case, but that was a definitely an interesting find. I'm gonna post the presentation on my website. It's gonna be sufferingoutdoors.com, and I'll do a blog post, lively legs versus standard flies and you'll be able to see the presentation and, and see the actual raw data um, on my website. So if you wanna check that out and you're interested in that, go to sufferingoutdoors.com.